So total price is going to be this much. So that's it, the canister is full. Um, time to close our system. This is the, the moment of truth. So we've done a few interesting experiments already on the channel. Today's experiment is also going to be interesting and maybe a little bit crazy as well. So on the channel, I've already done a few videos about my super low budget DIY CO2 system with the sugar and yeast. I currently have two, two of them up and running. Uh, they're down below here. So these two plastic bottles are filled with sugar, gelatin and yeast producing CO2. Currently, I have the low budget tank running on DIY CO2. So you can see the micro bubbles coming out of the diffuser there. And also I have this new tank that I set up recently, also with DIY CO2. So if you want to know exactly how I make these DOI systems and how they work, I have a video explaining all that. And I'll leave a link on top of the screen. Definitely check that out. So I've been using these systems for almost seven years now. I really like them and they work well for me. And kind of with the recipe that I use, they, they last quite long as well, almost, almost two months. But I've always been using them on very small tanks. So tanks over there, like 20 liters, 30 liters. I think the maximum that I've used is almost like maybe 50 liters. So I've always been very curious if we can use this same system on tanks much bigger than this. So that's all we're going to find out today. I told you this was going to be a little bit crazy. Uh, so what I have right here is a 20 liter or roughly five gallon bucket. Is it a bucket? It's a container. And this we're going to turn into an XXL DOI CO2 system with sugar and yeast. So I'm very curious how this is going to go. Um, this is roughly 13 times the size of my usual DOI system. Normally I use the one and a half liter uh, soda bottles. So this one is a little bit bigger. Can't wait to get started. Uh, first thing we have to do is buy a lot of sugar, a lot of gelatin and a lot of yeast. So let's go to the grocery store. All right, we have our ingredients, but you're probably wondering, Mark, why do you need such a ridiculously large CO2 system? So let me try to explain a little bit. So this is what I would normally use. This is like a 135 or like a one and a half liter soda bottle. And normally in here, I fill this up till about like one third with a mixture of sugar and gelatin. So it's like jello underneath. Then on top, I add the rest with water and uh, yeast. Then the yeast is consuming the sugar and in that process is producing CO2. And with the, with the recipe that I'm using, I don't get a lot of CO2, but it lasts a very long time. So it's very stable and it lasts me at least two months, which is quite long for these DOI systems. So I call it low and slow, and that makes it perfect for these small tanks. And there are ways to, to tweak this system to make it more suitable for large tanks, and you will get more CO2 out of it. But then it will only last you maybe a month or maybe even less than that. And that's not really what we want. So I'm curious to see if we can uh, use my recipe in this very large canister and yeah just see how much co2 we can get from it and how long it's going to last us just curious to find out so i think for this container for this recipe we're going to need uh, three kilos of sugar one pack is 65 cents we're going to need three packs of gelatin as well uh, i think one pack is 85 cents and then lastly we're going to need yeah about a teaspoon of, of yeast this pack is also 65 cents, so it is going to last us a long time. So total price is going to be this much. All right, it's now the next day. Time to continue with our CO2 system. So yesterday, uh, we finished our uh, sugar and gelatin mixture. It's now all the way on the bottom. Um, it's, it's still a little bit wobbly, but the gelatin is definitely set. So I placed it outside overnight so we could cool down completely. So now we have a, a thick layer of jello underneath. Uh, this morning I started working on the 
uh, lid. So I just drilled a small hole in the cap of the, uh, the container. The hole that I drilled is smaller than the diameter of the hose. That's actually very important. So you, once you pull the hose through, you get like a tight fit. And then to make sure it's completely airtight, I basically yeah, just put a little bit of glue on the, uh, on the connection here. And yeah, that's, that's it basically. Of course, we're going to add a CO2 diffuser. And I'm thinking to add a bubble counter in between as well, because it's nice. it will be nice to see how many bubbles per second we can generate with this system. So that's it. The next step is to add our uh, yeast mixture. So let's make that right now. Okay, so the yeast water is done. We'll kind of let that sit for a little bit let it activate, do its thing. In the meantime, we can continue with our, uh, our lid and the, the tubing. So we still need to add a diffuser and a bubble counter. All right, so this is basically everything we need. I found an old CO2 diffuser. This one is from Acorio. It has the, uh, the brown ceramic discs, what I really like. So this is perfect for our experiment. I took a bubble counter from one of my uh, other CO2 setups. Uh, I took a little piece of clear silicone tubing as well. So here we have the black, this is the special CO2 resistant tubing. Uh, but from the diffuser to the bubble counter, I prefer to have the, the clear tubing. So we'll use a small piece of that. Uh, so let's put everything together. I have a little bit of really hot water because this tubing is very rigid, it's very stiff. So if we just dip it in this, some hot boiling water, it will kind of soften up a little bit. So now we can piece everything together. Okay, scratch what I said, I'm not going to use the clear silicone tubing. It's way too hard and I, I can't put it on the bubble counter. I'm afraid I'm going to snap the bubble counter. So let's just use the, the, the black silicone. This is a lot more, a lot easier to work with. So we'll just cut off a small piece. So that's the diffuser and the bubble counter attached. Now we just need to get some water in our bubble counter. After that, we have this small piece of tubing right here. And I'm just going to take a little bit of water from one of my things. All right, I think that's it. Super simple. So we have our lid drilled, tubing going through that, sealed on both edges. Then we have the silicone tubing going all the way to our barber counter, from the barber counter to the CO2 diffuser. That's it. So I have to do a water change on this tank anyway. So I might as well just use some tank water for this. This tool is really super handy, by the way. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys. All right, so we're just slowly filling it up with water. Uh, on the outside, you can't really see it, but on the inside, you like see the clear separation between the water and the gelatin. So the gelatin stays all the way at the bottom. And now we just want to make sure we get as much, as much water in here as possible. Because the thing is, um, the yeast is going to start consuming the sugar. It's going to start producing CO2, but also alcohol. And the thing is, yeast actually cannot tolerate a very high level of alcohol. So if we have very little water in here, the alcohol level is going to start rising very quickly. And then the yeast is going to basically going to kill itself and the CO2 production is going to stop working. So if you have as much water in here as possible, it's going to take a very long time before the alcohol level is going to be high enough to kill the, uh, the yeast. So that way we can kind of prolong the procedure. And we also want to make sure that this end of the CO2 tubing underneath the cap does not sit in the water. Because if this sits below the water level, then the system is just going to start pushing out water through the airline tubing. And that's, that's not what we want. We want to have pure CO2 gas coming through here. So make sure that this is above the water level. So we're getting quite close to the top here. So I'm going to add in my yeast mixture just to make sure we don't have too much water in here. So let's just pour this in. Then we might add a little bit of more tank water. And then we're good to go. By the way, the tank water is not a requirement. You can just, uh, you can just use tap water. So that's it. The canister is full. Um, time to close our system. This is the, the moment of truth. Of course, it's still going to take a little while before we actually going to see some CO2. So make sure it's completely sealed. 
So I'm going to hang the diffuser in the tank behind me. It's now 4.30 p.m. I'm not sure how long it's going to take before we are going to see some CO2 bubbles from here. Uh, so if it doesn't happen before I go to sleep tonight, I'm going to take the diffuser out because I don't want to run the risk that this is going to like start working in the middle of the night, produce a, a really big load of CO2, and then we're going to kill all the fish. So I'm going to take the diffuser out and put it in just some bucket of water just, so, just, so, just to make sure it's safe. So there's our XXL CO2 system in place. Looks absolutely ridiculous, but yeah, I don't have space inside the cabinets to hide it somewhere. So that's how it's going to be for now. Um, yeah, but I guess for now we just wait. Once the uh, once we start seeing some CO2 bubbles, I'll uh, pick up the camera again. Several days later. Okay, time for a little update. We've moved from the big shallow to the 70 liter scapers tank. So the DOS CO2 system is now over there in the corner, a bit more a uh, bit more hidden, I guess. Reason we moved here is because the CO2 system from the 70 liter scapers tank actually finished, so this one needs to be refilled. Um, but it's actually still not working so we ran into some issues with the DOI system uh, when I made it it was Thursday and today it's Monday so it's actually been already four days and it's still not working but we're making progress and it's actually starting to become a little bit scary so if you take a look at the uh, the container actually let me take it out a little bit carefully Oof. So if you take a look at the container, like it's seriously expanding. So it's like, it's becoming, uh, yeah, it's expanding to the sides, expanding a little bit to the top. Uh, it's, uh, it's looking a little bit different than uh, when there is no pressure inside, basically. So that's a little bit scary. I mean, I don't think it can explode, but yeah, still a little bit scary. So we definitely have a lot of pressure going on in here right now. So I don't think it will be very long before we start seeing some CO2 bubbles come out of the diffuser over there. So it's been four days and I think the reason why it took this long to build pressure was just because I didn't add enough yeast from the very beginning. So I added basically the same amount of yeast that I would normally add in a one and a half liter bottle. And the reason I did that is because I thought that the yeast would multiply quite quickly anyway once it has some access to some sugar. But I guess I was wrong because on Saturday I still didn't have any pressure in the, in the container. So I opened it up and a full pack of yeast, 7 grams and some teaspoons of sugar to kind of kickstart the, the fresh yeast and since then we've been uh, making good progress also for the past few days it's been very cold in the house so right now we moved it here there's a heater on this side as well so i think very soon we'll see some co2 bubbles coming out of the diffuser so i'll get back to you guys soon and let's keep our fingers crossed and pray that this monster is not going to explode in my house Man, I'm so disappointed. I really didn't think that this would, would happen here. I mean, those super cheap, flimsy soda bottles, they can easily hold the pressure, but this this huge bucket, yeah, did not see that coming. It's now the next day, and I think the, the crack got even bigger, so yeah, there's just no way of saving this. I was thinking maybe we could glue it, but I think if we glue it, it's probably gonna rupture somewhere else, so. I think we have to call this experiment uh, a fail, but uh, I'm not giving up, giving up. I think we just have to look for a a better container for this experiment so uh, if you guys have any suggestions for a good container for this for this experiment let me know in the comments yeah that's the end of the video then i guess a bit disappointed but uh yeah let's uh, let's make it part two so hope you guys enjoyed this failed experiment don't forget to smash that like button and i'll see you guys next time take care